Okay, we're pleased to be joined now by NBA all-time great, two-time scoring champion, what six-time All-Star, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's got a he's got a, n- a nice resume and uh, Olymp- Olympian, Olympian, you know, seventy-six Olympian uh, gold medal gold medalist, and um, he's joining us today, Mr. Adrian Dantley. Good to be here, with, uh, Adrian. Yeah, you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we know each other for almost almost fifty years. Yeah, or maybe even more than fifty years. Adrian, we were discussing going over your um, bio. Who was your Olympic coach when you were in the Olympics? Coach D. Smith was uh, my Olympic coach. Uh, coach in North Carolina, great coach. Uh, he was one of two coaches. Him and my high school coach Morgan Wooten that didn't use foul language, but they got their message across. And uh, when they said something. You knew, you knew that t- you, b- you better get it together. <laughs> well, you, you know something. I was telling people that because you went to Dematha High School, you could have st- you started varsity as a ninth grader. Is that correct? Yep, started as a freshman, and uh, you know my first year there, all I was supposed to do was like, like you always talk about, rebound and play defense. Believe it or not, but that's what I did my my freshman year. And then my sophomore, junior, senior years, I became more of a, you know, more of a scorer, more of a, more of a leader of the team. Well, I was trying to tell people that the playgrounds that we played on in Washington, D.C., we had over 10 guys that made the NBA that played on the different playgrounds, either Rudolph, Luzon, Rose Park, all candy cane, all of that. And people don't believe me. So name some of the people that played on those playgrounds, whether it's AD, so they won't just say Kermit's just saying that all the time. Well, like I heard you, like I heard you last week when you was on a show that when you was on the playgrounds in Washington, DC, you better get there early. And if you lose, you might as well go home, you know? (laughs) So we had awesome call. We had, you know, Carlos Jones, we had, uh, you know, Billy Gore, a lot of great players from the inner high school. You was one of them, Kermit Washington, Clement, uh, Glenn, Glenn Price. I saw Glenn the other day, Kermit, at, at a store the other day, buying, going shopping. Uh, okay. uh, just a lot of, you know. You had Fatty Taylor, Bernie Williams, um, Tim, Tim Bassett, depending on what playground you went to in D.C., and they don't believe that because AAU has taken over so much they control the kids so much, and it's the play. I, I think they don't play on the playgrounds anymore. No, nah, kids don't play on the playgrounds anymore. They're gonna play on the, you know, wood top. But uh, that's a, like a law. Lo- that's a lost art here today. But uh, when we was when we were growing up, when we were when we were young, you know, we would go to all the playgrounds. You know, we would probably go to Rudolph during the week, but during the weekends we would always be at Luzon, right? Luzon or Rose Park. Well, sometimes we go from Luzon to Rose Park to Candy Cane. You know, wherever there was a game, now you, you were like gunslingers trying to find some place to play. But, a, you know, let me tell you about AD. AD, somebody said that you should have been the first four time all metropolitan player. Uh, is that correct? Because nobody has done that. It's, well, you were three times. I don't think you're going to make all met averaging about 14 points and 10 rebounds. That's what I averaged my freshman year. You know, most, most guys that, you know, most guys that make all met or all American, you know, they're going to average over 20 points a game. You don't see too many all Americans that average below that amount, but I held my own against older players playing against guys like you and James Brown, you know, always play against older players. So each year, I got a little bit better and, and, and work on things. And just like you said, guys didn't work like we did. You know, I remember during the summer, I would go out to the University of Maryland and run the whole stadium. You know, guys would look at me like I was crazy. But we used to do all those things. Like you said, have a weight vest on. I got that from you with jumping rope and all that kind of stuff, walking around during the day with a, wet, with a weight vest, thinking it's going to make you jump high. It but, didn't but, help you. It didn't help you. I didn't. I didn't jump. I didn't get. I couldn't jump high, but you, you could jump pretty high. Pretty high. <laughs> but you know what, though, AD, your first step was monstrous. You know that's what made you and Terry Cummings the same way. Your first step was made it very dangerous, and so I always had to check the best offensive player on the other team, and usually I had to check AD. I said, Lord have mercy, oh Bernard King, <laughs> all these guys, and you had to be in shape. 
because yeah. I try to tell people if they looked at AD to start the offense, they're not just going to look at him if I'm covering him and just right. say, oh, okay, we're going to go to somebody else. They got option one, two, and three. I said, Lord have mercy. I'm going to have a long night tonight. <laughs> but I enjoyed it. I tell the story to everybody. I like, uh, me and Kermit would go out before the game. I'm thinking he's a good guy. And then once he get on the court, he try to take my head off. <laughs> like, no, so, I no. What's up I, with this guy? It's almost like that Bill, it's almost like that Bill Russell, Will Chamberlain story where Will Chamberlain would always go over to Bill Russell's house, or Bill Russell would go over to Will Chamberlain's house for dinner. And then when the game started, it would be a different story. <laughs> Well, you know what, though, A.D., though, you were, you know, your work ethic is very few people can compare to your work ethic. You had you were legendary stories when I when we were young that on Christmas Day, A.D. is in the uh, gym working for four hours. Is that a true story, A.D.? Yeah. You know, I had the key to Coach Wooten's gym and and uh, I I did that. uh, I think I might have done that every Christmas uh, all the four years I was there at the mouth, you know, so, you know, back then, that's all we could do is play ball. We could, we, you know, you didn't have all the stuff that you got going on now. You, we, I was telling somebody the other day, uh, I was officiating a game at a, at a, at a high school and the, the gyms are empty. When we played all the arenas, all the high schools was, was jam packed, even for the JV game. So, uh, yeah. you know, you just always, so many, you're right. They have so many things to do. See, I used to try to tell people about the Christmas tournament at Cole Field Halls. Remember that? And you got it to usually the math of Mac and McKinley Tech or somebody. The place would be 10,000 people, 4,000 people outside trying to get in. Yep, yep. It was an unbelievable. Being a basketball player was huge. I, I was, uh, you know, I go all around Southern California and I, I can't tell you how, you know, it's like so rare that I see people gathered at the at the basketball courts. And with it being nice weather pretty much all year round, especially San Diego and L.A., it just you just don't see it a lot anymore. Well, A.D., you should you yeah, tell yeah, them about it. You, you don't see it at all because I was, I was talking to Stacey Alderman, Alderman the other day who's from California, and I asked him, do you see kids out on the playgrounds? He said, no, you don't. You, know, you don't, just don't see it that much like when, when they played ball on the playgrounds. Remember how hot it was on summertime, <laughs> A.D.? You better, you better get there early, and about 12 o'clock you'd have those salt – um, stains all oh, your yeah, head yeah. from them sweating <laughs> and you know and to get on the playground I, I tell people I was more nervous sometimes on the playground than in games in college because we had some really it, good it, yeah it, it, it was it was like that because everybody who came to the playground everybody had reputation and everybody would always look and see how that guy would comp- how he would compete against the other player and you know Coach Thompson, all those guys sitting on. Red Arback loved you. Red Arback loved you. Sit on the top of the hill, you know, just looking at us play. Yeah, I tell you one thing. Red Arback helped me was every year that he would come home for the summer. The first thing he would ask me is, "How much you weigh? How much you weigh?" You know, Hamlin check weighed two hundred five, two hundred five. My best years in the NBA when I was about two hundred eight, two hundred nine, and uh, that always stuck with me, keeping my weight down even to this day. You know, I always think of Coach Arback. He always asked me, well, how much you weigh? <laughs> I do the same thing when I see other people. Like, what's your weight? They, they get tired of seeing me because I ask them that question all the time. <laughs> you know what, though? Remember we went to Arback's camp up in Marshfield, and, and I, was a, I was a counselor, and we would play against the NBA players. That's James Brown was up there, Tom Bertelson. Yeah, I mean, he would bring up a really you good did- player. You guys would play against the pros. I was still in high school. I yeah, just I, watched you guys play. And uh, I, 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 I remember, you remember that time when Artis Gilmore came up there and Dave Cowan was just playing against no, him? I was no. like, holy no. shit, this guy's beating the hell out of Gilmore. <laughs> oh, oh you, you know what, though? Red Arbeck had, 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 had a good scheme. Yeah, uh, make- Dave, yeah. Cowan, Dave Cowan was, was manhandling him. I was like, wow, this is unbelievable. Yeah, yeah I remember JoJo White, all those guys. I know, thing, all of them. I know one thing, once I left there, I wasn't going back no more because remember we had to walk two miles to take a shower and the water oh, was like oh, in oh, the middle yeah. of your legs. <laughs> oh, man, I remember. <laughs> I'm, I remember the, I, I the, remember the food was good. good. The food was good. But you always were killing people up there, though, A.D. So here's a question. 
That's when Lefty Rizal was just coming to Maryland University. Why didn't you go to Maryland University? Because he wanted you so bad. Well, you know, even though I was young, I was oh, I was still older even when I was young. I figured like uh, they had a lot of All Americans on that team. <laughs> yeah. I mean, back then, you know, Merlin would get you know three guys first team All American. I mean, at a the time they was getting players like UCLA was. I remember like when Coach Wooten. Re- you know, recruited me. You like Adrian? We like you know, like to have you here. And I'm saying to myself, okay, Marcus Johnson is a first team All American, and I'm a first team All American. If I go to UCLA and we both even, who are they going to start? <laughs> They're going to start <laughs> Marcus Johnson. You know, that's that's yeah. the way I thought about it. But but Merlin was. Uh, I just I, I, at that time I just wanted to go away. I just wanted to go away to school, and uh, I thought that uh, Notre Dame. They had a, like a slot for me. I said, well, I can go right here and start right away. You know, what, what was that like going from Washington, D.C. to the Midwest and ended up in South Bend? Well, I told Coach Phelps he didn't, really didn't have to do a, a great recruiting job. I had knew all about Notre Dame, Austin Carl, Collis Jones, Sid Catlett, Bob Whitmore, all those guys. They didn't know the name and they're from D.C. So I already knew about oh. it, but. Once I went down that, uh, I knew the football history. Once I was driving down the street and I saw that saw that Golden Dome, I just said, "Hey, uh, I think I'm gonna go to Notre Dame." So that's 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 how I got there. So tell us about the when UCLA came in. I remember I was in Milwaukee. We were playing the Bucks that night, and you guys were playing UCLA. I watched it on television. Um, when they came in, what kind of record did you guys have in before they came in that game? I think both of us was undefeated. I think we was like 17 and 0. They were ranked one, we were ranked two. Uh, I remember uh, we had practice that evening. And I remember Bill Walton, all the teams like crossed each other. You know, we go into the locker room, they go into the gym. And Bill Walton was like, he was whistling the Notre Dame fight song. <laughs> <laughs> I said, hey, this this is something here. <laughs> like we're gonna we're gonna kill these guys. But anyway, <laughs> we ended up playing them. Uh, they had us, you know, they had us by six points. I think with three minutes left in the game, and we came back and uh, won the game. And uh, place was broke the eighty-eight game streak. You broke their eighty-eight game streak. Okay, yeah. tell us who, yeah, tell us who was on that Notre Dame team. You guys had a lot of talent on that team. Well, you know, uh, John Shoemate, he was the number one pick. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was All-American. We had Gary Brokow. He was the number one pick, went to the Milwaukee Bucks. Dwight Clay, myself, guy by the name of Peter Crotty, Gary Novak, Ray Martin, you know, Toby Knight. So we uh, we had a pretty good team. We was like do, you said, keep we in con- do you keep in contact with them? Yeah. I'm sorry. Do you keep in contact with any of those guys? Yeah, I talked to some of the guys. Uh, we're supposed to be having a reunion next year. We're all supposed to be getting going back to Notre Dame. They're having the 50th anniversary since that 88-game winning streak. So I think we're supposed to be getting together uh, next year. Next January would be, you know, 50 years. So now that you see um, how high school basketball is going, what do you think of high school basketball compared to when we played – and how the game is in high school now. Tell you one thing, I referee a lot of basketball games. And I see a guy, he's driving to the rim real hard. I said, oh, this is a foul right here. And every player, they always throw the ball to the corner for the corner three. I said, this is unbelievable. If I played, I would have been going to the rim. So, but what <laughs> you, it's, it's a, lot of, a lot of spacing, a lot of three-point shooting. Among all the teams, I mean, that's yeah. that's that's the big thing, man. But, well, you know what? Uh, go go, go I was ahead. The game the other day, and it was a big guy. I said, "Hey, man, you can get four, you can get three or four offensive rebounds the way these guys be shooting from the outside. You can get eight points just like that. You just you got to get the, you got to go to the boards now. You know, if you're a big guy, but now they have the big guys out in the perimeter. But uh, I, I think the difference is it's just more spacing, more up and down." It's really funny because back in the ABA, that's the way they played. And you remember when we was in the NBA, they was like, this is not good basketball. 
that's not good basketball. And that's what the guys doing today. They they playing like they did in the ABA back when they started. Oh, or when the Denver Nuggets are back when when coach from uh, Coach West said, yeah, was 140, 140, 150. Like this is not good basketball. That's what the teams are doing right now. Yeah, just run and gun. Yeah, it was enjoyable to watch though because when the NBA before you came in, I think AD, the only team that ran was the Boston Celtics. They ran up and down the court, and everybody else would bring the ball up slow. And it was a game where it was a slower game and more physical game. And I think that's um, that's what's changed. People asked me the other day, why there's so many injuries? Why are people um, taking off so much? I said, first of all, um, the game is so fast. These guys play above the rim so much now. So they're hitting the floor more. Um, yeah. and it's like, just a uh, different like, – What do like, you – Like MB, like MB from Philadelphia 76ers. <laughs> He's on the floor all the time. I said, this guy's going to get hurt. He got to stay on the floor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I can't <laughs> understand that. You know, he's so uh-huh. big and he can do he can do things, but it's such a high-risk, low-reward prospect to have him, you know, driving the ball and things like that. It's just... Hey, 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 hey Kermit, if we took off like the guys take off in there, what would happen? Oh, you, we couldn't take off. Yeah, I got, I got a sore finger. I can't play. Hey. You know, but you know what though, AD, <laughs> we didn't we didn't want to take off yeah, though. Yeah, ingrown toenail. I can't play today and all that stuff. You know? <laughs> the game was a different game. Unbelievable. Where did you go after Detroit, real quick? I got traded to Dallas, yeah. Oh, yeah, you played well at Dallas, yes, that's true. So some of the superstars, everybody says now on Facebook and Instagram, guys couldn't play now back when we played, and guys back when we played couldn't play now. You know, I I know that's not – the superstars are superstars. Comment on that, A.D. Well, you know, they say that all the time, you know, but – uh, I, I think if you're a good player, you can adjust to any style of play. And uh, that's that's the bottom line. If you, if you can play, you can play. You don't have any, you got different errors now. You were, you know, uh, you know uh, guys, you got different error now where guys just play different type of ball, different style now. I mean, if you take somebody like Carl Malone, nobody today could guard Carl Malone. You know what I mean? No, uh, you're right. right. You know what I mean? Like, I always ask somebody, like, who would you rather want to guard? Carl Malone or LeBron James? And I said, I would rather guard LeBron James. Yes. You know, he's he going to take a beating inside, you know. So it's just a matter, you know, it's just a preference of who you want to play against, how the game is played. And the game is game is different now. You got, you got, you got big guys shooting threes, and it, it's more space. And like you said, you got to be in great shape to play in the game today because the coaches now, they want pace. That's all they talk about. When you hear them in the timeouts, they want pace. Pace. You know, that's that's what the game is about today. And, guys, games translate. You know, it, like, say, for example, your game. You know, so so uh, so good at, you know, posting up, mid-range and everything like that. And now, today, with all the spacing, you, you'd, you'd have extra space to work with. So yeah. I, I just so, I don't understand when people look at that and they go, well, you know, he's not shooting four, 14 threes a game. You know, maybe he couldn't play today. That doesn't make sense. Well, Durant doesn't shoot a lot of threes. He's he got a mid-range game. Right. You know, kid from the Clippers, he doesn't, you know, he, he, he got a mid-range game. So, you know, you know, it, it just a matter. I know when, when I played, we had a three-point shot, but I didn't want to take a three-point shot because I was always concerned about I got to shoot 50%. <laughs> so, <laughs> I would always try to take good shots. I mean, if I was shooting, you know, 40%, I could take all kinds of crazy shots. Right. I always wanted to oh, – every, at every level, I, I know, Kermit, when we played, we always wanted to shoot what? 50%, right? We always yeah. wanted 50%. We didn't want to shoot 39% or you know, 42%, stuff like that. But that's the way it is today. You got a lot of volume shooters. You know, you got yeah. a lot of volume 
shot and shoot. So. Volume over over efficiency. Yeah, but if you shoot um forty percent from the threes, you're shooting like sixty yeah. percent from the twos. But I, you know, as I, I never shot outside. <laughs> <laughs> I was not an outside shooter. But AD nowadays with all that spacing, you probably would destroy these guys. But you know why? Nobody wants to get in foul trouble no more. They don't want to play that defense down there anymore. Well, I tell guys when I when they be talking basketball and they see guys go to the hoop, I said, when I came in the pros, my first game, my first game as a rookie, I went to the rim real hard. Bob Lanier fouled me. He almost took my leg off. He almost, he, I mean, he, and he told me, A.D., you're not at Notre Dame. You're not coming on my territory. That's the way it was when Kermit right. and everybody played. You did not come and, you know, clip. If, if I remember when we played Golden State, I went to the rim. Clip for Ray. He said, Adrian, don't come in here. <laughs> yeah. Don't come in here. And that's the way it is today. You got guys, if they drive to the rim now, and you, you can't even foul a guy hard. Because if you foul a guy hard now, you're going to get suspended for two, two or three games. You know, and you're going to lose, lose money. So now you got you got to let the guy go to the rim now if the guy goes to the hoop. That's an intimidating factor when you know what – I know when I go to the rim and I see Unsell there or, or Cliff Ray there, I don't know if I want to come in here because I know I'm going to get thumped real hard. So that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, change, that's, a, that's a game changer right there in the sense that you got players that can drive to the rim. You know, you, you, you got you to let them go as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? We were told, though, back then, don't give an easy layup. You know, foul him hard yeah, because you don't want him to come back in. Just like I was telling, I think I was talking to Terry Cummings, is when I had to play defense, the first, I would give a foul away to run hard through a pick, and the guy would move out the way from that point right. on. Right. You can't let him know that you tried to hurt him on purpose. But I didn't like people running to me at full speed either. Right. <laughs> so you you don't set a good pick. And yeah. that helps you as a defensive player. Yeah, but you didn't set no picks. Eighty, you didn't set any picks. They were coming to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're not gonna set a screen once they know some play against somebody gonna go through that. You know, go through that screen real hard. You know, you know, you'll be thinking next next possession when you go down the court. Yeah. So you were doing this era of some really good small forts. Name some of the small forts you had to play against in your day. Oh man, everybody I played against. Bernard King, Larry, Larry Bird. Oh, somebody, somebody, somebody asked me the other day, who who, who did you have trouble uh, scoring on? I said, well, Louis Orr. They're like, who? Louis Orr? <laughs> Louis Orr, who just passed away recently. Long, from Syracuse? Sorry, from Syracuse? Yeah, long, skinny guy, lean, long arms. Wouldn't go for my head fake, you know what I mean? You'd be surprised at, you know, players you had trouble with. Like Kermit had, had problems with him. Maurice Lucas, he tried to beat me up. I used to tell him, I'm not coming inside. I'm going outside. I'm not going to try to. <laughs> Lucas was a try to beat you up. You're right. But yeah, you know I'm what, though, a, 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 Yeah. <laughs> you know, your, pump, your pump fake is what kept people down because you would you would damage people if they went for your pump fake and you went up into them. <laughs> you know, you did. It's like training a dog that jumps and you knee him. And the next guy, AD, you say, hey, he ain't going to jump. No, after I hurt him. <laughs> you didn't try to hurt him on purpose, though, AD. I'm trolling. Been doing that pump fake since high school, man. I don't know why everybody go for it. You know, I guess they, were just, they just wanted to block, you know, especially in high school, you know. You let somebody block your shot. They, oh man, yeah, I'm, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm just setting them up. I'm just setting them up. But, 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 but the players, you know, you got, you had Alex English, you had Bernard King, you know, yes, yeah. yeah, all down the road, Lord. Yeah, I did, I can, Walter, did you have to check Walter Davis? Walter yeah. Davis. Walter Davis. I hate playing against him. He was running all night long. You know, the, the you Greyhound. Know, you know, Calvin Nett was good. You know, you know, every. every Every small forward in the NBA when I played, uh, if you didn't, if you weren't ready, you could get embarrassed. It wasn't like we got a night off, you know. Somebody, everybody was getting, you know, twenty plus, twenty plus points uh, every night at, at that, you know, at that small forward position. Yeah. Do you think the small forward position was the most talented position when we played? That had the most talent across the board. Compared to the fives, everybody didn't have a good fives. What did you yeah, think? Everybody, everybody had a everybody had a, a good three. You know, Kiki Vandeweghe. Everybody had a good three. You know, every, you know it was it was a tough position. You know, yeah. but then majority of times, majority of games that I played in, 
Majority of small forwards didn't guard me. The other team always put, like, Kermit, we play power forward. Well, I wonder, like, what are you doing guarding me? You know, like, Maurice Lucas playing power forward. What are you doing guarding me? Kevin McHale, you know, had problems with him. He would be guarding me. So, you know, I always played against the other team's best defensive player that happened to be a power forward. <laughs> <laughs> that's, when you, I would go out, that's when I would go outside. I wouldn't be going inside trying to bang with those guys. Yeah, but you would pump fake and go inside, though. You do your pump fake and go by them because you had a good first step. You know, you know. thinking about it, what team did you enjoy playing for the most? Well, I enjoyed – I was tight. I enjoyed playing with L.A. when I was there for three years. I enjoyed playing with Kareem, Jamal. You know, and the reason why they traded me was because – we didn't have that much success in the playoffs because I was a small forward and Jamal was a small forward. So, you know, that's when they made a trade to get a power forward at that position. And, and you uh, went to Indiana? I went to Indiana, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. I went to uh, Indiana and that's when they brought in Haywood and brought in Haywood for me. So uh, I, had, I, had, I, had fun with all, I had fun with all the teams that I played with. And, uh, How about Buffalo? That place was awful. Great place. Time. Great time. How about Buffalo? Buffalo, you... we could have, Buffalo, we could have been pretty good. Oh, you were, yeah. But the weather, the place. Yeah. Oh, oh. My, my my rookie year, we started Bob McAdoo, Moses Malone, myself, Ernie D, and Randy Smith. Oh, that's team. That's a good team. We had two different owners. Brown the owner traded Moses Malone like. Three weeks into preseason, traded McAdoo at the 35 mark. He went to New York. Then they traded me at the end of the season. <laughs> that was a good team, which which became the um, L.A. Clippers, what, San Diego Clippers, then the L.A. Clippers after that. And um, so you played with Randy Smith. I, he was a, he was crazy. I played with him with the Clippers. And Pretty he passed away. Yeah, he passed away maybe 10 years ago, but he was a funny teammate, I'm telling you. I enjoyed him so much. All he did was talk about you all, talk about me all the time and everybody <laughs> else on the team. But um, Buffalo was a good team, and you won the scoring championship, what, two or three times? I won two times, and then my, I could have won three. That year I was – I was so – far ahead of everybody with about 30 games into the season. I was averaging about 30. And Artis Gilmore, I tried to get a rebound from Artis Gilmore, and I got my hand caught, and he like, and he like tore my whole wrist. Yes. So I was, um, I, I was um, out for the whole year. I had torn ligaments in my wrist, and uh, I ended that season with uh, playing only 30 games in a season. So oh, yeah. your, your average was high enough, so, but you, you, know, like, Artis Gilmore, you know, Artis Gilmore didn't do it on purpose. He's like, oh, nice he, guy. he is a nice guy. He might have been the strongest guy in the league besides Kermit. You no, know? no, no. <laughs> I tell people about Daryl Dawkins. I said, Lord have mercy with Daryl Dawkins. If yeah. Daryl had gone to college, what do you think with a good coach? Do you think he could have been a Hall of Famer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, guys, the guys come directly into, you know, college from high school. I mean, you know, they don't, they don't get that training. They don't get, you know, they don't get that coaching. You know, like, like Bill Willoughby, he came in as a freshman. Remember him? Yes, Atlanta. Very, very talented guy, but he didn't, you know, get to that level like everybody thought he was, you know. So, uh, yeah. but then you have your exceptions. You know, you got your Kobe, LeBron James. Like, they went directly in high school. But those Kevin guys, Arnold. coaching, they was always around basketball all the time. So, you know. So I'm telling you, though. So tell us now, what do you think? Do you watch the NBA games now? I watch them. I don't watch them as much like I used to. I don't, I don't know. I, you know, believe it or not, I'd be watching politics more than I would be watching basketball. <laughs> well, you're, you're in the I, watch, I, watch, I, watch, I watch I watch it when the good teams play. I watch it. The, the big game. game. Yeah, big game. I, I watch it. Like I'm exercising downstairs. I, I turn on, especially – Watch it in the fourth quarter. Yeah. Who's your favorite player then? I mean, I have I like Kevin Garnett. I like a few other players. I used to like really watching Golden State play. Um, who do you like watching? Because I don't watch. I, I like I, I like I like watching Durant. You know he you know 
played right he, he's something else. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. But okay. Yeah, now, you got the mid-range game. Yeah. Okay. Well, now the Greek, the I Greek like, freak. I like all the, you know, I like all the players. Yeah. I'm sorry for over talking you. The Greek freak. What do you think of him? I like him. Yeah. Locomotive. You know, guy plays hard, going to the rim. Very difficult. If you're an official, it's very difficult. You know, the referee. If you, you hear the players complain, coaches complain because he's coming at you. And that puts a lot of pressure on a defensive player when you have a guy who's constantly coming at you, you know, full speed. You know, so uh, great, great player. <laughs> yeah, great. yeah, yeah. He, he uh, yeah, he's got. All, it seems like he's got all the tools as far as his physicality. Oh, they, they don't start shooting him three points on a regular basis. Right, right. Yeah, you feel like that'll take away from it because he's he's gonna get the he's gonna get the calls. He's he's very capable, and he's one of the only guys who really uh makes a point to go down and just bang and go down and yeah 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 but the good thing too though he can palm the ball that that gives you oh, a yeah. great advantage because when we were playing it was only about four or five guys in the whole league ad that could just pick the ball up you had dr j connie hawkins um you know like people like daryl dawkins yeah. Yeah, and that made a big difference. How they could yeah. fake and hold the ball. I think like Giannis that. has the biggest hands in the league right now. Well, I'm, I'm telling. You, I, I enjoy watching him play. I enjoy watching him play. But um, people were saying. I was reading an article the other day. Certain people saved the league. And real quickly, I tell people, Dr. J saved the league in my mind because until the ABA came in, we didn't have the full house all the time of all the you know all the fans in the stands and and. And Dr. J, um, did you ever play when he came down to play against um, Urban Coalition, uh, AD oh, and DC? I, I, I remember you guys when y'all played. I was always playing the game before. I was in the high school league. But I remember mm-hmm. Dr. J when they used to come down. They yeah. played at Georgetown. The and place Howard would, University. Yeah. The place would be packed, you know. Hot, yes. Yeah. yeah I remember used to play against Dr. J, too. He, he, to me, you know, what a gentleman, worked hard. People would come hours before the game just to see him warm up with a whole Philadelphia team. And we're not going to keep you much longer, A.D., but that Philadelphia team, I tell people, was maybe was the most talented team with the individuals. Not a team now, but a group of individuals. What do you think of that? Oh, definitely. I mean, you had – it wasn't enough balls for all the guys they had on the team. They had, you know, they had all, like, number one picks – you know, Doug Collins, yeah, World Be Free. You play World Be Free. Yeah, McGinnis. Jordan yeah, McGinnis, Harvey Ketchum. You know, it was great. It was, great, some great players. Yeah, so everybody well, always wanted, when Philly came in town, everybody was always, like you said, it was at their arena. You know, oh, yeah. Looking for a I, show. I, I did want to ask, too, what was it like in back in those days when you, when you finished, you know, in the NBA and had went overseas? I think it, it was a it was a pretty good experience. I was over there for two years. Uh, you know, a lot of times you get players who finish their career, they go over to Europe, but it, it was it's a lot it's a lot more hard over there than it is in the United States because the coaches over there think the American players are supposed to save all the save all the other guys who can't play. You know, but uh, it, it was pretty good. I was in Milan, so uh, it, it was a great experience. I had my family over there. And uh, I enjoy it. That's good. Well, AD, we're glad to have you on. We like to have you on maybe every couple of months, if you don't mind. Maybe yeah. talk about the championships, you know, the different things like that. And But we, you know, it's a pleasure. We've known each other, gosh, for over 50 years. Over yeah, I remember 50. I used to like, you know, like I said, he used to beat me up all the time when I played. <laughs> no, no. It, listen, listen. I had the utmost respect. I had the utmost respect for you, AD. On the playgrounds and in the NBA. Like, I, like this guy beating the hell out. I was telling my friend, this Kermit, this dude is crazy, man. We were just out together the other day, and it's almost like he doesn't even know me, you know. But anyway. No, and listen. Take him outside. Take him outside. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's funny I would hear stories about AD I said oh my god he's jumping rope this many times I got a jump rope more and he was younger than me and um but you were legendary in DC and back then people don't understand high school basketball players back then were big news I mean you were something real special we only had the Redskins 
and college basketball and high school. But high school basketball was huge back there because we had so many stars. You know, DeMatha was always good. And I just wanted to, DeMatha got kids from everywhere. See, where I lived, you had to live in a certain oh. region to go to that school. Yeah. DeMatha went around, picked all the best players from all around the city. <laughs> That's how they got James Brown, gave all these other guys that came around. But every team had stars. I mean, Spingarn was good. Mackin was good. John Carroll was good. I mean, you had so many. And when they had Christmas tournaments or different tournaments, the place yeah. was packed. Yeah, you didn't know where to go because there would be so many good Christmas tournaments at oh, that yeah. time. You just so good, you know, you see see good basketball all the time, you know. Okay, A.D., we, first of all, we want to thank you so much for coming on. And um, you look good. You're in good shape. He always stays in shape. He always just asks me, <laughs> how are you working out? What are you doing? So I work out six days a week, so I still I still try to stay in some I'll, kind of shape. I'll see you when I come out to Vegas. We'll work out a little bit. I'm oh, gonna yeah. Well, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I work out now with a guy named Hasim Rahmad, who used to be the ex heavyweight champion in the world, and and AD. I, 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 yeah, I I used to come out to Vegas every summer, but my wife, my, not my wife, my daughter, she works with the Vegas Aces, so oh, she just oh. she just took over the house. So I don't, you know. I got to <laughs> well, does she pay rent or is it is paid for? Rent free. Oh my God. Oh my God. That's the kids. That's the kids. But you know what though? Thank you once again. And it was a pleasure. And you take care. Take Take care. care. Thank you. Just how to put it all in perspective, baby Cause you're